Today we're going to be looking at this interesting Sahara gaming case, which has got some really interesting Pirate Eye fans as well as an RGB hub and controller. Okay, so this is what's inside the box. You've got the case itself, but inside the case we also have four fans as well as a controller there as well. So you can put the fans where you want rather than them being pre-installed and then you're having to uninstall them and put them in different ways so you can set up exactly how you want. The prices usually of these usually go for around about £40 and upwards, so getting those included with the case is an actual bonus. Okay, so let's have a look at the case itself. So first of all, look at the side. You've got a tempered glass side panel, which is 0.8mm thick, which is fairly thick for a side panel. You don't tend to get many much thicker than that, to be honest with you. Usually they are a lot thinner, so that means it's generally a good quality. It does have some plastic protection on it, which you can easily peel off, he says. And then there is also some more plastic on the inside to peel off as well. There are four screws, thumb screws, which you can tighten with a screwdriver if you wish on there. So you can take those off with ease. Again, just unscrew them and the glass will just fall out. So just watch it doesn't just fall because there's nothing holding it in other than basically where the screws were actually screwed into. The corners, uh, I wouldn't say are sharp, but they're a bit more pointy than rounded. And there's no plastics on this at all. This is just a piece of tempered glass. Uh, obviously with the plastic over the top of it. Okay, let's have a look at the front. So it's a mesh front, so that's going to be really good for airflow. You've got obviously the small holes in there, but it's also got sort of like a honeycomb effect or a really large honeycomb effect as well when you look at it. There is holes down the side as well, or both sides to let even more air in. So you shouldn't have any issues with airflow. When you take the front off, it can be a little bit fiddly. So you might have to mess around with the little clips at the back to get it off. But when you get it off, you have got obviously a piece of obviously mesh there as well for a dust filter. It doesn't completely fill, cover the whole of the front. There are a few little gaps down the side and so forth, but generally if you've got fans and stuff in, it's going to block most of those up anyway. Uh, but otherwise, looks pretty good. I don't think you're going to have any issues with airflow at all. Okay, on the top of the case, you've got the mesh, which will obviously peel off. It's magnetic, so that's pretty good. You've also got room for a water cooler or extra fans up there. It will take up to a 360 millimeter water cooler or a 280 or a 240 on the top. And it will also take the same on the front of the case as well. So you do have plenty of water cooling options and fan options as well. So you've got buttons on here. You've got a power button. Looks like you've got an LED button and a reset button. You've also got two standard USB ports, a USB free port and a headphone and microphone. There is no USB type C ports. Okay, on the back of the case, you've got room here for a fan, either 120 or 140 millimeter. You've got your, obviously, your cutout for your I.O. plate for your motherboard. It's got seven PCI slots on there, so it'll take your M.A.T.X., A.T.X., and so forth. Uh, it's also got room for free bay PCI uh, vertical slot as well, so you could have your graphics card vertically. Obviously, you'll need the cable in to do that, to connect it to your motherboard. Uh, and you've also got room for your power supply there as well. Okay, so let's have a look at the inside of the case itself. So let's start with the shroud. There is a shroud there, so if you've got a power supply in there, you can actually see the manufacturer name on the power supply, which can be a good thing if you've got a decent power supply. It can also be a bad thing if you've got a really crap power supply. I wish the manufacturers would uh, have some sort of plastic insert or rubber insert or something that would go over that so you could optionally show let's just say the case manufacturer's name instead of the power supply but again that's optional it's only a little fiddly thing the shroud has also got two cutout holes near the motherboard so you can easily feed your cables up there is no cutout further down the actual power supply shroud for feeding up anything like let's say your graphics card cables or anything like that they'll have to come through either there or through the back of the uh, case around about there depending on how you want to do it you've also got a large cutout here to access the back of your cpu so if you're changing your cool you don't have to take it out of the case and so forth and there's plenty of cutout holes all around uh, which aren't rubberized or anything like that but they they are folded metal so you shouldn't cut your fingers on it or anything like that so which is pretty good but otherwise for the inside that's pretty much it with the exception of where the cables come in from the I.O. panel, they do hang down a little bit, but they do go straight across out another hole just about here um, where they're kept nice and tidy. 
Right, so the back side of the case, or the reverse side of the motherboard, you've got an accessory box which comes in the hard drive bay here. The accessory box comes with a few cable ties, a little speaker and some screws, but pretty much that's it. Um, there is no tray as such for the actual hard drive. You've got to basically screw that in manually. It will fit two hard drives there. The website is a little bit confusing because in one place it says you can fit three three and a half inch drives and in another place it says you can fit five. So I'm not sure which it's supposed to be, but I can only see two places you can fit a three and a half inch drive and that's there and there. It also says you can fit up to five solid state drives, which I can count to that. So, but it also says in another place it's free, but you could fit an SSD here, here, in this tray here, and potentially two in this bay there, so which is five. So I'm not sure which way it's supposed to be, but the way I'm saying it sounds more logical to me, unless there's a hidden port, which I cannot see, or they're expecting you to actually screw it onto the mesh at the top or something, then I don't physically see where you're gonna be able to put it. Otherwise, you've got a nice big cutout here, big area for your cabling. If you're not using the hard drive, uh, then basically the cabling can go over the top. Saying that, if you look at the bottom while we're here, um, you can actually remove the hard drive bay. It does have a dust filter as well for the power supply, uh, but it is one where you have to peel it out and then squeeze it back in. Would have been better on a tray, because if you ever want to clean that, you've got to turn it upside down. It's also got no, four nice chrome effect uh, feet there as well to stop it slipping, which is nice. But going back to the back, you can see there's quite a lot of cable tidies. There's actual some routing here, so you can put your cables through that, which is good. And there's a good number of tie downs as well. Would have liked to see probably one or two, probably in the mold in here as well to tie a couple of cables down. But again, it's pretty adequate. It's roughly a 17, 18 millimeter clearance between the actual tray at its deepest and where your cover would be. Next to the cables on the back, they are mostly all flat black cabling, so that means it's black and it's flat with the exception of the USB free cable, which is a round cable. And one thing I must admit they have done very well is kept all the cables black. So that means that, like, unlike Unlike a lot of manufacturers, they still leave these multicolored and they look uh, pretty awful inside a case. So uh, I must admit they've done very well there, making sure that everything is black. Okay, so we've got the machine built up. Let's have a look at the lighting effects first. Bear in mind, there's no actual RGB lighting on the case itself. It's just with the included fans. So it comes with four fans. So we've put three on the front, one on the back, where you could potentially move them around and have some on the top and so forth, depending on how you like it. So let's just have a look at some of the effects. The, it does come with a remote control, so you can use a remote control to change the effects, which is really good. Otherwise, you can hook it up to your motherboard if your motherboard's got a 5-volt ARGB header, and that way you can change everything there as well. But... This is the what they class as the preset number one. You can change it to preset number two, three, four, five, and so forth. But one thing you'll notice on these presets or the coloring is if you've got the fans connected up properly, because they're sort of, you don't have to wire each one in, they're sort of linked together. Uh, if you've not come across them before, is the actual effects flow from one to the other. So it all looks streamlined, which is pretty good. It's quite unique to look at, to be honest with you. They do have different modes as well. So if you press the mode button, you've got full red, you've got green, and so forth. So you can choose whichever mode you want. There's quite a few there. As you can see there, it's got some fading color options as well. So it's really up to you. There's lots of different options there. You can also put the fans on auto, uh, as well as adjust the fan speed and the LED speed from the controller itself, which is really good. Or if you just want it red, you can check uh, the red button. You just want it blue or green. You can just click the green button on the controller and you can lock it in that color as well. Or if you want to pr prefer to run the motherboard sync, there's a button there which will let it sync up with your motherboard, how you've got it set up. Or if you don't want the lights on, just press the little red button at the top and bang, you've got no LED lights on there. 
obviously we do have a little bit of lighting inside of the machine still because we've got some ram and some on the back of the motherboard as well okay so to the positives and negatives so negatives we didn't really have much to be honest biggest one really depends on how you set it up and that's the vertical gpu mount so if you've got a tower cooler like we've got in this machine here which is an 8k 400 by deep cool if you fit the gpu in vertically it pushes right against the actual cooler so there's no room between them Again, if you're using something like a water cooler, you're not going to have that issue or a stock cooler. But if you're using something like a tower cooler or a dual tower cooler, you could potentially have the graphics card pushing right against the cooler itself. Would have been nice if it was vertically mounted just a little bit lower down, which give you a little bit more room. On top of that, vertically mounted, there is no bracket inside or anything to basically take the weight of the actual GPU. So the only way it's fastened in is basically two screws on the back of the case, and then it's basically left to sag down, which over time on cases, especially with this thickness material, could potentially bend the case in a little bit. So I would suggest going out and buying an aftermarket GPU bracket, brace, stand, whatever you want to call it, just to help support the weight of it stops that little bit of a sag otherwise not really any issues now down to the cooling the design of the front of this case is absolutely brilliant it lets all the air in that it needs when we say all it needs the actual front doesn't impede the airflow at all so if i remove the front of the case it doesn't affect the temperature of the parts inside so they don't get any cooler or hotter one thing what did impede it slightly is if you do include the dust filter on the front which is included that will raise the temperature again depends on the specifications of your machine but by around three degrees on the cpu and two degrees on your graphics card so if you're wanting the coolest temperatures you may decide to get rid of this but just bear in mind there's a chance you're going to get a bit more dust inside your machine but saying that the front of the case does have a mesh covering most of it anyway it's not as fine as that but it's still pretty good but otherwise we couldn't really find any negatives positives well the fans are probably the biggest positives to be honest with you they're called the pirate eye fans or modular pirate eye fans because you can actually slot them together you don't have to put any cables between each one or anything like that they actually physically slot together like bricks of lego which is really good and really unique because if you look at the design on the front the colors flow between each of the fans rather than each one having its own separate design and style going off so that's really good and to be honest the fans what four fans as well as the controller and the actual hub you normally pay 50 60 70 pounds or more for something like that well they're included in this case and this case has got a rough retail value of around about 80 pounds so i think it's absolutely brilliant one thing what does surprise me though the actual manufacturer's name sahara gaming is not listed anywhere on the actual case or in the box another thing to bear in mind there's no manual included either so if you haven't built a case before you may struggle a little bit if you've built one you probably wouldn't need the manual anyway it's pretty straightforward uh, but otherwise I can't do anything other than highly recommend this product. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, why not click this box up here and you'll be able to see other case reviews we've done in the past. Otherwise, you can click this box, you yeah, have that one just there, and you'll be able to see some fan reviews we've done in the past as well. But while you're at it, click that thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and leave a comment just below and let us know how you like the video.